Hello everybody, welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are playing a Boros Prison deck that user Ice9 took 2050 finish in MTGO Modern League. Um, so we actually played uh, a variant of this deck before on the channel several months ago, but we called it Boros Stacks. Um, S-T-A-X. For those who are wondering if you want to go back on the channel and check it out. And the deck did pretty well. Um, and we're gonna give it another go, but the reason we're playing this version today is because this version has a play set of Mana Tithe. And I got excited. I saw this in the 5-0 list and I was just like, oh my goodness, I have to play this. It's got a set of Mana Tithe. I've always wanted to play a deck that has a play set of Mana Tithe. Um, we just recently played a deck on the channel that had one in the sideboard. And Death and Taxes decks back in the day sometimes would run Mana Tithe in the sideboard or, you know, I, I've done it before, but like this is the first deck ever where there's a set of main deck Mana Tithe and I'm ready to get people. And it's super effective in here because it's a tax, it's a stacks deck. So you have every way to tax their mana, you know, like Ghostly Prison making their creatures unable to swing and, you know, if they want to cast a spell, they're barely going to have enough. You can Mana Tithe them and like it's got a lot of mana disruption. It's got Molten Rain, Stone Rain, Pillage, Boom Bust, like every three mana or less way in red to blow up a land. And that's really gonna hurt their mana base so that Mana Tithe can be a lot more effective. And while we're messing with their mana, uh, Magus of the Tabernacle is going to mess with their creatures because it's going to make them uh, pay to keep their creatures alive. And they're probably gonna leave up just enough mana to cast whatever spell they wanna cast. And then you mana tie them. And uh, besides Magus, the only other creature and only other win con in our deck is Goblin Dark Dwellers. There's two of them. And that is our main win con. You might be thinking, that sounds horrible. How can you like play a deck where you're only win con is just two four four menaces in your deck but somehow it works it, it worked last time when we played boro stacks and, and hopefully it works again um but it, it's there's only a couple creatures in here so i apologize in advance if this video doesn't have too many games in it because it might go long um but yeah goblin dark dwellers does his job really good because he's gonna come down and with that ability he can flash back a land destruction spell and just keep your opponent off mana like it's so good at keeping your opponent off mana and then a 4-4 menace is pretty good at closing the game we just gotta hope they have no like path to exiles um and hope that their only removal is like push and bolt because we're not gonna ever let them have enough mana um to kill goblin dark dwellers it's just not gonna happen they gotta have dismember a path um but yeah, it, it worked out last time. Hopefully it works out again and I'm ready to mana test some people. So let's do it. And shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you like to play Magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below. They're the most reliable and affordable MTGO card rental service. So it is the best way to play all the Magic online you want. And if you want to pick up today's deck in paper or any cards, really, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com link and anything you purchase that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon. Their names are scrolling down below. It is because of you guys this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. If you would like to support on Patreon as well, a link is down below. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. And as you can see, my chat bar at the top of the screen is still not working in, in today's video. I don't know what's going on with it. I'll have to figure it out later. Um, however, besides the point, we are playing some Boros Prison. Uh, we went over most of this in the intro, how we have all the land destructions and Mana Tides. Oust is a hard removal spell that doesn't require the opponent or doesn't let the opponent search for a land because we're trying to deny mana. Bolts as well. And then Thrill of Possibility can filter to help find the Goblin Dark Dwellers because it is our only win con aside from um, Magus of the Tabernacle. And uh, yeah, aside from that, we went over everything. I guess I will announce Boom Bust for those who don't know how this works. It blows up a land of you control and a land an opponent controls. But um, you might think it's bad because it backfire on you, but it really doesn't. Because Cascading Cataracts is indestructible and Flagstone's a trocare. If it dies, you go and fetch a Plains. So it doesn't really hurt to blow up these, but if you don't have those, then it could definitely backfire. Sideboard, we got Rip for the Grave, Suppression Field, in addition to our main deck Suppression Fields. Oh yeah, I forgot to go over that because it makes activated abilities two more to activate, so it's good against things like Tron, Urza, and uh, against Fetches because it stops Fetchlands abilities unless they pay two. So if it's like a triple color deck with a bunch of Fetches, 
can kind of slow them down. So there's another one for that reason. Ghostly Prison against creature-based decks. Um, more bolts against little weenie decks. And then two copies of Boil to blow up islands in case we're going up against blue. Along with Besage to pair with it to make our stuff uncounterable so that we can make sure our Boil resolves. And we got a Gemstone Caverns just in case that we are on the draw because we want to get that Pillage or Stone Rain or Molten Rain off as quick as possible. Or get a turn one. Uh, boom bust if possible and then trinosphere is good against storm and with that we are ready to go on to the gameplay hope you enjoy got a game here against tiki 13 and we are going to be on the play with some boros stacks and another one lander we're getting a little bit mana screwed today unfortunately uh we're gonna keep that one and we can turn to a boom bust here into turn three molten rain or stone rain let's throw away megas of the tabernacle and let's start on sunbait crayon go which I should have started on a mountain, so I didn't have to take any pain, but it's okay. I'm gonna take two unnecessary pain here, perhaps more. So thank you so much for the tier two sub at nine months in a row. Done. We had, we didn't have a sub baby because it was a tier two for nine months. We had sub twins. What are we gonna name our twins? Got any good name ideas? Okay, let's uh, name Boom. So it looks like the opponent's on taxes. Blue white tempo taxes. Could see Primetime and Time Raveler getting the nerf stick again in the future. Primetime never got banned from Modern, but it got banned in Commander. In Time Raveler, yeah, I could see Teferi Time Raveler not really getting banned. I don't think it will get banned, but like it's it's really good, but it's not like dominating modern. Okay, I'm gonna save the pillage. I'm gonna stone rain this because pillage might go towards like a batter skull or something. You never know. But yeah, this uh, goblin dark dwellers flashing back another land destruction spell will probably just end the game. But then again, they have access to path to exile, so they might be able to deal with it. They hit another one. Ooh, a mana tithe, just to make sure. Come on, cast another one drop, I dare you. <laughs> Stop hitting your lands. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. They hit another land. Goblin Dank Dwellers. Well, I whiffed my land. Come on, I have Dubs Dark Dwellers. That's two land destruction spells right there. I just need the mana. Are you still hitting? Oh my goodness, they're still hitting their lands, but at least they're colorless. Please, mana, please. Ooh, that's good. That stops them from activating Ghost Quarters. And that also stops me from cracking my sunbaked canyons, but it's okay, I don't want to crack them anyways. Land, please, yes, finally. I'm taking so much pain, but we're ready to win now. It's time. Ponza FTW, being annoying. Son? Oh, you gotta think about that for a second. Yeah, the sub twins. The sub twins. Man, look at that. We're at seven from a dang giver of runes. No, you can't activate that. I got a suppression field, boy. See, you're playing taxes trying to disrupt my mana? Nah, it's the other way around. It's the other way around today. You ain't disrupting my mana today. I'm disrupting yours. Yeah, you going to discard? A boom. 
All right, let's play goblin number two. <laughs> yeah, they're scooping it up to goblin number two. All right. Uh, going on to the sideboard against blue-white taxes. You can't make up names, but your blood-born twins are called Kuro and Shiro. Okay, I got this. We can do a name generator again like we did the other day. Um, hold on a second. Let's uh, sideboard real quick. Uh, definitely want ghostly prison and bolts. And, um... Possibly Trinisphere, but not on the draw. I think I want Gemstone Caverns on the draw. I uh, like Mace of the Tabernacle. A Thrill of Possibility is filler. Um, mana I think I can cut a couple Mana Tithes. Maybe Suppression Field I feel like is going to be great here. Uh, I think I'm going to cut a couple Mana Tithes. And run it like that. Alright, we're going to do Random Word Generator. All right, and we're gonna do um, two words, nouns. All right, so our our sub baby twins are gonna be called regret and snakes. <laughs> regret and snakes are twins' names. Uh, yeah, that looks like a great hand. Got the mana type in the opener. <laughs> Oh, dang, they got the vial, but it's okay because I got suppression field. And also, I can pillage the aether vial. Come on, play a stone forge. Yeah, manatide that. Give me a boom bust. No boom bust. All right. Well, suppression field to shut down that vial. They're probably going to vial something in response. They don't. Are they trying? They're not. Yeah, they got absolutely hecked. I love Manatai. Manatai is so fun. Regret and snake sounds about right. Yeah, it sounds like a solid snake and his, his, uh, War buddy regret, like Solid Snake's war veteran buddy. So with Pillage, am I blowing up a land or am I blowing up Vile? I think I blow up a land. I think that's definitely more worth. I can blow up their silent clearing. Sword of Fire and Ice. Okay, because it's going to cost more mana to activate those. So yeah, I think I just blow up uh, Silent Clearing. Because now it costs four mana to equip a sword, and I'm going to try to just make them not have four mana, which seems good. But they can still Vile stuff in, like Hang 2 and Tapping Vial. So that's the scary part, but I can... Drop out Ghostly Prison. Are right, they going to activate... Are they putting in a Spell Queller? Dang. Alright, well... Um... Blackstones. Go fetch in. Get a, a Sacred Foundry tapped. And let's oust the Spell Queller and get our Ghostly Prison back. And next turn, I Dark Dwellers and blow up another land. Or I can blow up the Vial so that they can't get in the Spell Queller. Is this a 20, 20 turn beatdown? Yeah, they almost did it too. They almost beat us down with that giver of runes. We went down to five life. It was all because of our shock and our, uh, our dang, uh, what do you call those things? All right, Sacred Foundry tapped, go. It was all because of the sunbaked crayons. So next turn, I'll be able to Goblin Dark Dwellers get back pillage and blow up 
Um, probably the sword because I have a feeling they're gonna hit their land drop and be able to deal with the oh, but now they're gonna have the stupid uh spell queller back. So yeah, I think they got us in this one. Um Alright, so if I goblin dark dwellers get back pillage, they are likely to quell the pillage. And then next turn I can proceed to bolt the queller, get back the pillage. Blow up the sword. Um, yeah. And go and get Sacred Foundry. Dank Dwellers. Oh, dude, sure. You can do that. That does nothing. Get back a uh, pillage. And cast it on... Well, okay, do I... Uh, probably Sea Chrome Coast. Let's do Sea Chrome Coast. Like, they could use their vial still, but I'm just going to try to deny their mana so they can't even use their vial. That's my plan. Let's keep on hitting the lands. I think we'll be more effective over the late game, the late portions of the game. Cascading cataracts does nothing. Do I start swinging? I think I do. Okay, they're taking it. Because I have ghostly prison, so they can only swing one creature at a time. They're going to vial in... Dice the same Traft. No sphere of safety? No, no sphere of safety in here. Yeah, so Geist of Saint Trapped is going to be kind of a problem. They can race us with that. Um, okay, let's bolt one of their creatures. I think it's got to be... Um, probably Spell Queller. Because Thalia can kind of... I want Thalia around attacks them. And um, I don't want their own Thalia to hurt themselves. But I have enough mana at this point to do whatever. I'm trying to get like a boom bust or whatever. Okay, I don't think I oust because I actually don't want them to gain life. Or you know what? I think I stay back now. Yeah, because I'm not winning this race. I think I just stay back to block the... To block the Geist and hope they don't have like a path. Yeah, I was thinking of asking myself, Char, but that doesn't really get me anywhere. I just need to draw like a Magus of the Tabernacle or another land destruction spell. Or like a Boom Bust would be probably the best. I would definitely want to draw a Boom Bust. Molten Rain. Okay, Molten Rain can blow up their planes. gonna path my dark dwellers yep but it's okay because they can't swing you know what i think i'm gonna oust their thalia now because if their next draw is not a land then that means that the the next turn they're gonna whiff again drawing the thalia and i want them to whiff as much as possible i don't care about bringing them back up to 20 eventually i'll get it and it looks like they did whiff their land, and that means they're going to whiff again next turn because I put the Thalia back on top. Oh my goodness, I'm getting flooded.
bolt. <laughs> Come on, just don't hit your land drop. Just don't hit your land. <laughs> This game is so weird. Okay, oh, that's good. I think that wins us the game now. Because double, double ghostly prison. Yeah, they're never swinging at us. They have to get up to four mana. That's, that's not ever going to happen. I still have like several land destruction spells in my deck. Eventually I'll draw another one. I probably have like 10 more in my deck. Another vial, sure. Wow. Well, I only have three more win conditions in the library. Dark Dwellers, Magus. Oh my goodness. Land after land after land and we're just denying their lands. I kind of actually regret denying their silent clearing because they would have been taking so much pain off that. Okay, they're officially on zero lands. I mean, I think it's pretty safe for them to scoop because with double ghostly prison, odds are they're never attacking me ever again. All right, let's go thin the, the library. Okay, we actually have nothing to thin with in there. See, now this is a good, a good example of why this deck works with only four total win cons, two of which are primary, two of which are difficult to win with. And it's because of a situation like this. This situation happens often with this deck where it's just a board stall because your opponent has nothing to do ever. And you will eventually find one of your two power or four power guys. The only problem is that the opponent could be holding a set of Path to Exile in their hand. They already use one. But if they have enough paths to deal with our three dudes that we draw, then we're screwed. Okay, there we go. Found one. Finally. Goblin Dark Dwellers, get back, um, bolt, and bolt their face, and now they ought to scoop it up to this if they don't have a path in hand. But they can still draw Plains Path. Got a big bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios. Dude, why would you get a big bowl of cereal? You get a small bowl of cereal and then eat it and then refill it. Because if you just have one big bowl of cereal, it'll get soggy. And then you'll eat one half good cereal, one half soggy cereal. Whereas if you just get two fresh bowls, they'll be fresh both times. <laughs> All right, the opponent scoops it up. We denied everything end of the game with them on zero lands. And that is what this deck does, boy. When was I going to get my Magus? I was going to crack a Sunday Canyon. There was my Magus. It was going to be the next turn. All right. Well, that was a good showing of what the deck's supposed to do. GG. Got a game here against Web Thurix. And we went against this person last week, I'm pretty sure. This hand is questionable. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it. It, it like, plays Suppression Field turn two. So if they're trying to fetch, it can slow them down. After that, Planeswalkers, it stops their abilities. Um, but I can at least turn three a pillage, and then once I get up to five, I Dark Dwellers back a pillage. So if this is a shadow, the suppression field should be pretty good, because they have a lot of fetch lands. They're not saying anything in the chat, I was just making sure this wasn't somebody I went up against earlier in the stream. Yo, that is a mana tithe. I will literally mana tithe anything right now.
Okay, they're getting a breeding pool. What what deck runs Mishra's Bobble breeding pool? I think it's got to be an Uro deck of sorts, like a Soul Tie Uro. The only Simic deck I would think that would run Mishra's Bobble would have Uro. Okay. Blighted Agent, I will counter that. So it's Infect. And I don't think I've seen Bobble in Infect. I think I have before once. It's probably just to help out there become immense. Flagstones, let's go and get a Sacred Foundry. Make sure we have our double red for next turn. All right, Suppression Field, so that if they want to fetch, they're going to have to pay two extra mana for it. Uro's fair and balanced, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, they do. See, I told you. So our sideboard, um, our sideboard rest in peace is going to be clutch. Although I don't really care about Uro because I'm going to ruin their mana with Stone Rain. Or pillage or whatever. So I kind of want to blow up a breeding pool instead of an ink moth nexus because I'm kind of like I'm kind of like fearing them getting out Uro if I blow up Ink Moth and then they just like fetch and stuff and play Okay, you know what? Maybe that was a bad idea. Maybe that was a bad idea because I don't think they could Uro in any way there, unless they had another Bobble. Because that Suppression Field was shut down to fetch. They would have to have another untapped source, and they wouldn't have enough to delve out the Uro. So, yeah, maybe I didn't need to do that. Maybe I should have just hit the Ink Moth. They scoop it up. All right, cool. And uh, I think Trinisphere seems decent here. And since we're on the draw, let's bring in Gemstone Cavern. Oil hits uh, breeding pools, but I don't care too much about that. I definitely want Lightning Bolt and Ghostly Prison. Rip is not terrible, but I don't think it's great. I don't care so much about Uro when I'm going to disrupt their mana, because they need double blue, double green, and I'm not ever going to let them have that. Makes the Tabernacle could backfire if their creature they're attacking with a Zinc Moth Nexus, and they're only going to have like one or two creatures at a time, so not the biggest deal. Gorilla Possibility is filler. I guess Suppression Field I can do without. And I guess I try it like that. Do it. See, why are my notifications not working? He has. Thank you so much for the six months in a row subscription. Welcome back. Uh, yes, I, I did. I did. Has. I did it. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Marination. Enjoy the emotes yet again. Okay, Mulligan the One Lander. How you doing today? Get that one. It looks pretty decent. Um, let's throw away Dank Dwellers. Too far away in terms of mana. You're trying to, you're gonna change yours to Snuggler Copter? Better do it before it gets taken. You announced it live, and this might be on YouTube, so you better take that name quick before somebody takes it. A second Trinosphere is not the best. Listener Elf, sure. Okay, this is going to be awkward. Super awkward. Scales up on the Glistener Elf, sure. Um, yeah, I'm dead. All right, they got a pretty good draw, and our draw sucked. <laughs> but now we get to be on the place. So it should be a lot better. Let's cut the... What is the land we brought in? Gemstone Cavern? Okay, let's cut Gemstone Caverns. And let's bring in a Thrill of Possibility, perhaps. 
Pretty D's got to play Paper Magic. Sweet. I haven't played Paper Magic in months. Since before quarantine. It was like February when I last played. Feels like it's been forever. Um, yeah, let's keep that. Unfortunately, Aus is a sorcery. So our life total is not too relevant because they're going to be infecting us unless they're going on the Uro plan. But I think I'm going to shock a Sacred Foundry to give them the illusion that we might be holding up Mana Tithe. Maybe that would get them to not do anything this turn if they're fearing um, Mana Tithe. Okay, no fear. Plays the noble. Um, I think I might oust the noble. Just to like constrict their mana. Best as I can. Oust is an underrated card. I like this card. It's just one mana, put it second from the top, just tuck it. So it's like gone for two whole turns. And then once they play it, I'll have so many sickness again. Like, it's not bad. All right, they got another one. Oh, dude, I'm going to disrupt their mana. All right. Uh, let's pillage on their forest. Dude, they're just scooping it up. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I think they mulliganed and then we're just blowing up all their mana. Whatever the next land they play, I was going to Molten Rain that as well. Throw a possibility to go search in. And I was going to end up finding a ghostly person, meaning they were never going to swing. And then Molten Rain their next land. Yeah, they were never going to attack me. And then Stone Rain for the next one. Another ghostly person. And then Trinosphere so they would never, ever cast a spell. And bolt something yeah it was just, we were locking them out until we got our goblin dark dwellers and that's what this deck does it just completely locks you out of everything forever until you hit the dark dwellers all right gg still never losing to infect now, only once we beat in fact like 25 times on the channel only lost to it once due to mana screw hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video as you know we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be and as i always say if you want to catch the full games unsped up unedited and uncut from the video you can go to the twitch link down below and find the vod from last monday if you want to check it out and uh we're seeing up the next two rounds today there was a third round that i was going to speed up and keep in here but i decided to cut it for various reasons um however you might have noticed that this video was very short. We usually don't spe uh, do the speed up until like an hour and 15 minutes ish into the video. Um, but this is only at around the 40 minute mark, maybe 35 minute. I'm not sure. So it's a lot shorter of a video. And there's a couple reasons why um, these next are being. Sp first of all, this first one's being sped up for because it was one of the longest games we've ever had in the history of the channel. Because today we're playing a literal stall deck. Um, so it's meant to just like stall for eternity until you eventually find the one of your four win cons two of which are effective two of which are very slow and uh, So we're going up against mono white tokens or wait is this black white tokens? Yeah, it's black white tokens and ghostly prison really shuts them down and Because like they're a token deck they want to go wide But we like ghostly prison stops people from going wide so they can only ping at us with a 2-2 if they ever get a creature to attack with but uh i have double suppression field and so that means fetches cost four additional mana to crack and we're not letting them have a single mana so those fetches are dead and then we also just keep drawing land destruction spells to blow up every single land they ever draw so we completely got them and then we get the megas down and we can just get them with the megas and we even got dubs meguses and uh, th their way of dealing with our dudes is to just draw a place at a path to exile and as possible because we have four threats in our deck and they have four path to exiles maybe they could have like two path three push or three push two path um you know those decks go like they're a little bit different sometimes their removal suite 
Uh, but game number two, they're definitely going to prepare for our ghostly prison. They're going to make sure. And uh, I, that was, they're like uh, thoughts using me a bunch and stuff. I think that was game one. I'm not sure if I'm getting confused with this game. They're thoughts using me and they didn't take my ghostly prison. Um, but I think they brought in Sundering Growth or whatever to be able to deal with my ghostly prisons. But I got two of them. So I'm not really worried too much. And I'm just waiting for this game to run its course. However, there is one problem and it might be pretty apparent. Um, but I am not really finding that much, uh, land destruction spells. I'm like really hoping for land destruction spells. And so I have my two threats, but they end up finding paths. Uh, I think they find multiple paths and like... I can't really swing with my Megus into their board once they get another token producer because um, they got intangible virtue, their token's getting pumped, and my Megus is only a 2-4, so I keep drawing removal spells dealing with their tokens, but I'm just trying to find like a goblin or something, and then even they battle screech and get some flyers that are 2-2 two, two flying vigilances, and since I am not finding a removal or a land destruction spell to save my life, I can't deal with their mana, I can't do anything. And I was just praying for another boom bust off the top because in this scenario, mass destroying all lands on the battlefield would be amazing and save me a bunch of, uh, get me a bunch of time. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I think like 15, 20 turns goes by and I don't find a single land destruction spell and there's like i think like 20 land destruction spells in this deck and then um i'm gonna spoil it right now but the game's gonna end in like a second anyways but i like when it goes to um the next game or when it goes to um when the game ends basically we drew a bunch of cards like you know you can do that after the game ends to come to find out that my next eight draws were land destruction all eight draws in a row in the whole entire game i could not find a single land destruction spell except the very beginning so that's a huge bummer that they were all stacked on the bottom of the library but what are you gonna do and then we're going on to the next game and this one was against uh black white midrange now the reason that i'm speeding this one up even though it was like a 20 minute game it wasn't like super long um, but this game had a very, very crucial misplay in it. And if you leave those unsped up, believe me, as a YouTuber, I know you get slaughtered in the comments for stuff like that. Um, so I just wanted to state my case and defend myself, if you will. Um, so pretty much what happened in this game was the opponent had Tide Hollow Scullers. And, you know, in, when, you are, when you're streaming and recording and commentating and all this kind of stuff, you get distracted. And for some reason, in the moment, I thought that they acted like spell quellers instead of, you know, Tide Hollow Scullers. So I, I, like in my mind, I thought that blowing up the Tide Hollow Scullers would mean that I get to cast the spell underneath it for free. But no, it's Tide Hollow Scullers, the Thought Seize one. When you kill a Tide Hollow Sculler, it goes back to your hand. And they get multiple Tide Hollow Scullers. So in, in the middle of the game, uh, when they have multiple Tide Hollow Scullers, I eventually draw a Pillage and uh pillage can blow up a land or an artifact and so it seemed like really appealing to blow up the tide hollow scholar that had the bolt which is right here you see it on the screen right now so i blew up the title scholar that had the bolt i bolted the other title scholar i got my spell back but in reality i should have just blew up their white source and have them color screwed and that would have bought me a little bit more time and a little bit more time to deal with their Liliana. And if I can blow up their mana, I, I drew my suppression field. So if I blow up their land, they wouldn't be able to activate Liliana because it would cost four mana to activate Planeswalker abilities. At this point in the game, they wouldn't have four mana, they would have three. So I would have been able to deal with Liliana. Liliana wouldn't have ulted on me and it would have been a whole different game. Um, so unfortunately, that is a thing that did happen. Misplays do happen um, in the heat of the moment, especially. Um, these are the kinds of things that if I wasn't like streaming and recording, uh, believe me, I play a lot differently offline. I mean, I haven't played offline in a long time, but you can focus a lot more when you're offline. Anyways, with that, let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with three total wins and the deck did what it was supposed to do. It blew up lands, left people on zero mana for like the whole entire game and then just taxed everything they did. Like they couldn't crack their fetches because of suppression field or use their ghost quarters and field of ruins. And nobody could like use, I mean, it's meant to stop planeswalkers, but the Lilianas were still a big issue. Because if you don't get it out on time or if you get stuff thoughtsies, it's, it's difficult. So Liliana decks are, I think, yeah, I pretty much think that Liliana decks are the one problem. And uh, another thing that I said, um, which I will repeat, I don't remember what game it was, but uh, 
with only having four win cons there's a chance your opponent could draw their four path to exiles and hit each one of your threats as you play them like they could just be sandbagging a planes just go planes path planes path planes path and they can try to like deck you out first and uh likely you're gonna deck them out first because they're like fetching and cantripping and stuff likely it's gonna work out in your favor but if it doesn't then I recommend adding like a single tin castle Arden Veil in here at least or like a haunted fen graph or like maybe two castle Arden Veils just to make sure in the late late game you have a mana sink to give you a win condition because like when the game goes on these might not always be a reliable win condition if they have path to exiles or dismembers or something ready for them doesn't matter how much you stall out your opponent if they're able to deal with those things as you play them if they're like a removal heavy deck then it's a problem um but then again making tokens with castle iron veil doesn't synergize very well with magus but then again if you got your magus that there you go that's your win con so yeah i think the castle iron veil is definitely the way to go or like if there happens to be a land that exists that like can ping for one every turn i know shiv and gorge does so maybe like one copy of shiv and gorge if that's even modern legal that could be something that you run in here um otherwise uh yeah i think that the deck is like it's it's kind of it works but another thing that i would add in here is a sweeper despite the fact that ghostly prison does all the work for you and you blow up their lands you play ghostly prison they're never going to attack you anyways but there were some times where like either they blew up our prison or they were able to go like Titan decks with Field of, Field of the Dead, for example. They could go wide around the Ghostly Prison, and uh, yeah, like they had enough mana, they had all the mana in the world to pay for it. Like maybe a Sweeper, maybe a, a couple Wraths in the sideboard would not be bad, because the Titan decks are a huge problem. And uh, maybe I would find a way to, I mean, probably not incorporate Blood Moon. I think Blood Moon's gonna be too much of a, um, a hindrance on yourself. Um, but then again, you do have a lot of mono red spells in here, so maybe it's not the biggest deal. And I don't think when you Blood Moon, uh, I don't think Cascade and Cataracts lose its indestructibility. So I think it, it, it should be okay. In theory, Blood Moon should work. And you just really need something to stop those Titan decks. Those Titan decks are an absolute issue because they ramp so much and just get around all of your land hate. And uh, yeah, that's that's the one problem, I would say. Other than that, the deck works out pretty dang great. It's fun to blow up lands. I, that's one of my guilty pleasures in Magic the Gathering. I shouldn't like man, land destruction, but I do. It's it's cool. It's 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 a lot of fun to just like deny everything in a way that you're not like taking the resources or I mean you are taking the resources, but like counter spells and thought seizes, that's kind of boring to me. But blowing up lands, that's where it's at. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know what deck you want to see in the comments down below. Go check out the social media. Links are down below as well as a link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream all of our Magic the Gathering gameplay on Mondays all day long. And we stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday. So come out to your stream if you want to check out some games. And, um... What else? What else? If you want to try today's deck out for yourself, consider checking out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to check out this deck on MTGO, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck and play along with us. And if you want to check out the deck and paper, or if you want to purchase the deck and paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon. It is because of you guys' channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. And if you would like to become a patron as well, again, link is down below. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.